Hello, this is our presentation of our Mend Range Theory Project. Um, we did Pamela Reed's uh, Self Transcendence Theory. Um, our group consisted of Chastity and me, Amanda Sturmer, Kim Seals, and April Reese. Um, I'm Kim, and I'm going to start. Um, I'm going to talk about the background of our theorist, Pamela Reed. She was born in Detroit, Michigan. She attended Wayne State University, where she um, achieved her BSN, her MSN, and her PhD. Her concentration was in psychiatric mental health of children and adolescents, and also as a nurse educator. She served as a dean for the academic affairs at the University of Arizona College of Nursing, as a fellow in the American Academy of Nursing, and as an editor for the Nursing Science Quarterly. The development of self-transcendence theory um, began, uh, or the theory was developed in 1991. It was in an effort to benefit um, the older adult in maintaining mental health and uh, well-being throughout the aging process. Um, when we were looking at it, uh, it met the mid-range theory um, because it, it qualified as being applicable to the actual practice of nursing with a specific um, obtainable outcome. Uh, it was used actually in mental health nursing to address the vulnerability, the self-transcendence, and the well-being among uh, the elderly. <clears throat> the major practice experiences and theoretical sources included the deductive reformulation. Um, it was used to um, develop the theory, that is the use of knowledge derived from non-nursing theory that is reformulated from a model, conceptualization of human development uh, thought to end at adolescence, uh, but it's actually proven by Reed to continue throughout the aging and dying process, and that's according to Coward in 2010. Um, she also based some of the theory on work done by Martha Rogers, um, and Rogers' principle included um, in case the lifespan development with a balance between person and environment um, playing a major role in a positive outcome. Um, theoretical sources uh, used for the development also included Reed's own clinical experience and research. Um, she found that fewer resources for support of the well-being of the elderly led to higher incidence of depression while um, if the elderly had the appropriate amount of resources they were less likely to be depressed. Um, April will present the studies. I'd like to introduce myself. I'm April Reese and I'm here to discuss the studies that were used in Pamela Reeves self-transcendence theory. Uh, the first study that we're going to discuss was a comparison of 28 mentally healthy older adults compared with 28 clinically depressed older adults. There were two different scales they used to measure the level of development. The scales were the DRLA scale and the CESD scales. The results from this study showed there was a relationship between the mental health and the availability of resources. The results also showed development processes did not stop in adolescence, but they continued throughout the aging process. Another study that Pamela Reed did included 30 hospitalized clinically depressed older adults. Again, they used the same two scales, the DRLA and the CESD scales, to measure the development of participants. Self-transcendence was found to be applicable to each participant. The results showed the association between depression and the level of resources was not found to be related in this study. It did not support Reed's beliefs. Another study used 55 independent aging adults between the ages of 80 and 97 years. The new self-transcendence scale was used 
which is a little bit different than the ones that were used for the previous study. And these results showed proof and supported Reed's original concept that availability of resources results in healthier mental well-being. Now Pamela Reed's a very accomplished author. She had several publications that we used in our uh, presentation. The first publication that we found was Toward a Nursing Theory of Self-Transcendence, Deductive Reformulation Using Developmental Theories. This article was published in the Advanced in Nursing Science in 1991 and it outlined this application of deductive reformulation that she used to develop her self-transcendence theory. Another article, Self-Transcendence and Depression in Middle-Aged Adults, was published in the Western Journal of Nursing Research in 2001. Uh, in this article, it extends a focus of self-transcendence from the aging adult to the middle-aged adult. This is where she started actually realizing that it was through the entire lifespan that this self-transcendence theory actually proved applicable. Another uh, publication was End-of-Life Caregivers' Perspectives on Their Role generative caregiving. It was published in the Gerontologist in 2010. It was in this study that she looked at the families of aging adults nearing the end of life due to terminal illness. She outlined the difficulties faced by these caregivers and the outcomes of caregivers and interventions for improving these outcomes. Self-Transcendence and Well-Being in Homeless Adults was another publication. It was published in the Journal of Holistic Nursing in 2007. And this article proved that regardless of being homeless, individuals maintain the need for all required components for development. Next, we're going to talk about the nursing meta paradigm. This will be with Chastity Ame. Hi, I'm Chastity. I'm going to talk about the nursing meta paradigm. Um, it shows us, related to our self transcendence theory, that the client continues to grow over the entire lifespan. Um, our interactions with people and their environment can have both negative and positive effects on health and well-being. The primary action of the nurse um, is to support the client through this process in order for them to seek um, the best optimal health and well-being. We're going to look at some central concepts and some definitions um, of our self-transcendence theory. The theory um, has three major concepts the vulnerability, self-transcendence, and well-being. Vulnerability is defined as the awareness of one's mortality. Self-transcendence is defined as the process by which one looks inward, outward, into the past, present, and future. Um, it's kind of a self-reflection. And well-being is defined as the mental feeling of health and wholeness or completeness. So major assumptions of our self-transcendence theory is that nurses huge knowledge to foster health. Um, another assumption, clients set boundaries around themselves. Coward states that Reed identified the process of self-transcendence, um, that it can provide meaning to the life of a client. There are some theoretical assertions and propositions. Um, with the end of life comes greater self-transcendence. There are variations of the boundaries that surround the client, and previously defined moderating and mediating factors influence the relationship between the three major concepts that we talked about, which were vulnerability, self-transcendence, and well-being. Um, just a closer look at vulnerability, um, it helps us to clarify self-transcendence as not only dealing with end-of-life issues, but also life crises, such as a disability, a chronic illness, childbirth, and parenting. It also refers to the fluctuations in perceived boundaries that extend um, a person beyond their immediate and constructive use of self in the world. The fluctuations in vulnerability can be um, described as pan-dimensional, which means they are outward, temporal, and transpersonal. Um, we're looking for a schematic for our self-transcendence theory. Um, Algood and Tommy um, presented us one that um, represented the theory. Um, it showed how the vulnerability, self-transcendence are all interrelated and um, provide concepts for our well-being. Um, it showed us and reiterated that personal and contextual factors um, in our lives 
um, mediate or moderate relationships, and there are points of interventions to promote self-transcendence where those are being positive or negative. Um, just a little summarization of the schematic. It shows us that increased vulnerability is related to increased self-transcendence. Also that self-transcendence is positively related to well-being. And um, again, that personal and contextual factors may influence the relationship between vulnerability and self-transcendence, but also between self-transcendence and our well-being. Hey, I'm Amanda. I'm the last one in our group. I'm going to go over the remaining slides and then I'm going to discuss later on a scenario that we came up with involving the theory we chose. Next is the application to nursing research, nursing education, and advanced nursing practice. Continued research extends the age range of the client in this theory. Self-transcendence theory is used in many nursing educational programs today across the country. Um, the APN must remain knowledgeable of this theory to find ways to positively influence patient well-being. In the hypothetical clinical scenario, our group came up with, um, we're going to use Mary. She was an experienced nurse that works in a mental health, um, in the mental health field. She leads daily groups and individual therapy sessions in the inpatient substance abuse treatment substance abuse treatment facility. On this particular day, Mary's counseling a divorced woman in her mid-30s, mother of three. She's now in her second week of treatment for depression and alcohol abuse. The patient states that she began drinking to deal with her troubled marriage, stating that it was the way her own mother dealt with problems when she was younger. She reports to Mary feeling guilty and ashamed. She also worries that her kids will turn out just like she did. She grew up in a home with an alcoholic parent and now her, her children are having to face the same situation. Through daily therapy sessions, Mary has determined that her patient's level of vulnerability and sense of well-being are not an optimal level for the patient's state of health. As a mental health nurse, Mary knows that Alcoholic Anonymous, or AA commonly known, uses the 12-step program that involves the actual process of tra self-transcendence. As a nurse familiar with Reed's theory of self-transcendence and its associated definitions, she knows that it's crucial that she helps her patient to express these values and behaviors. With vulnerability and well-being being the most two important components of the self-transcendence theory itself. Mary realizes that she must facilitate her patient in becoming aware of her own mortality and improve the patient's sense of wholeness. Mary knows that once these behaviors are achieved and expressed, that her patient will be more successful in such programs as AA and her road to recovery. She knows that as a nurse, she must remain diligent in promoting the principles of self-transcendence, but also she knows that she has to help her patient, not just this one, but all her patients become aware of self-transcendence and the process that it involves um, to be able to be successful in maintaining their well-being. I'm just going to next summarize um, our slides or our paper. Um, earlier it was proposed that an increase in well-being is influenced by an increase in self-transcendence. And well-being is a major process of nursing imperative that nurses, all of us, understand and actively encourage the concepts of this theory. Um, again, as we stated earlier, it is the primary action of the nurse to support the client through this process in order to seek health and well-being. That was according to Coward. Another author in our study points out that the self-transcendence theory can be a pathway for helping the healer, allowing nurses to maintain a healthy lifestyle as they care for others. Reed's theory of self-transcendence requires specific actions by healthcare providers to promote and achieve positive outcomes in an individual's ability to maintain a state of well-being. Um, that's our group's presentation on Reed's theory of self-transcendence. Um, and what Kim kind of summarize and finish everything. These are the references that we used in doing our um, presentation on our mid-range theory. Um, thank you for listening and um
hope you enjoyed it.